1991. She was catapulted onto the public stage in 2002 when her husband, Meher Arar, was deported to Syria, where he was tortured and held without charge for over a year. She campaigned tirelessly for his release. Dr. Mazir has a PhD in finance from McGill University. In 2008, she published a memoir, Hope and Despair, about her pursuit of justice. And in 2011, she published a novel in French, Miroir et Mirage. Without further ado, Dr. Mazir. Thank you, Nadia. Good evening. May peace and the blessing of God be upon you all. Assalamu alaikum. Um, first of all, I would like to convey my uh, sympathy and my solidarity with uh, Sarah. I think uh, we all should do that. Uh, she's going through a really difficult time, and uh, it's the least we can do this evening to uh, remember her. Well, she's among us, but to remember her family as well. Um, what am I going to say? I have to admit I didn't prepare any notes this evening, because I think the most important person that you have to hear from is Sarah. She has a story, and she has a very difficult story to listen to. Uh, what I would like to, to say, though, is, um, of course, I mean, why they invited me here? It's because I went through something, I wouldn't say similar, but in some aspects similar. Um, but if I learned something out of that, is it is so important to speak out. And when Sarah was talking about her ordeal and how he, she stayed three months without speaking out and how about how everyone else was telling her keep quiet and he's going to be released, this is a very old story. It keeps repeating and repeating and unfortunately it works sometimes. It works in the favor of whoever wants us to not speak out. I'm glad that Ara is here in Canada, and I'm glad that she is speaking out. Maybe not everyone is prepared to speak out. Speaking out, it's not an easy thing to do, especially when you have been in prison, when your loved one, when you don't even know why they, they put them in prison. I will start by telling you, hearing what Hillary was saying, I was at that event, I remember, and I was very enthusiastic about the Arab Spring. And I say very clearly, I was. But I will tell you an anecdote. Well, a true thing. Yesterday, I was in a function. And I was talking to two Egyptian women. One of them was telling me, oh, you are going to that event. I said, yes. And the other one was, didn't really know what was about. So I was trying to explain to her a little bit what is it about. And all of a sudden, the atmosphere changed. And they were talking to me, oh, it's a fine walk. You have to be careful. And it brought me back 10 years ago when my husband was arrested. The same thing was being said. And I don't want to. I was debating within myself whether I should mention that or not. Because I know it's very tough for Sarah. But I'm sure, you know, I read an article, I think Warren Kinsella said, she, he said, the lady of steel. So I'm sure she is a lady of steel, and inshallah, things will happen. But um, this explains a little bit the difficulty of um, where we are, and how we, when I say we, people who are in Canada, who are Egyptian or not Egyptian, doesn't matter, but how they perceive things and how wrongly they still perceive things. 
So we are still in that idea, oh, you know, you have to be careful, you don't know where, who are you defending, and I'm glad that I mentioned this. I said, you know, I don't know Mr. Alcazaz. However, the fact that he has been in prison for nine months in solitary confinement, this is injustice. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter. It doesn't matter whether he did something wrong or not. All what matters is that there is a tremendous injustice, and this tremendous injustice should be corrected. Unfortunately, in some people's mind, they still live in fear, and they still think that, you know, <clears throat> keeping quiet or not really uh, will maybe lead to something. Well, it won't lead to anything, let me tell you. It will lead to maybe, like Mr. Comey said, 10 years more in prison. And then those same people who were not sure they would come and they would say, I am sorry, too late. Keep your sorry for yourself. So I think today we have a case in front of us and everyone here in the room, it's fine to come and it's fine to be here, you know, to support Sarah and to support her family. That's very nice. But I think everybody here in the room wants they go out home. I don't want you to forget about that or maybe to keep it somewhere in your mind. Do something, something very useful. For example, Hillary Holmes, she's not here, but she mentioned that John Baird raised the case of um, Khaled al Kazaz with his counterpart when he went to Egypt. You think how did he raise that? You think it came just, he opened the media one day and he said, oh, you know, that would be fine to go and talk to my counterpart about the Kazars. It's about the pressure. It's about organization like Amnesty International who took on a bond the case. It's about um, uh, other organization like Human Rights Watch. But also it's about citizens like you and me who can write down letters and who can send them to John Bear. So this is the least people can do to practice the fact that you are safe and the fact that you are enjoying, and we are enjoying, including myself, this freedom that other people, like Khaled, is not able to have. So I think by writing the letters, by telling about, a lot of people do not know about the story, telling about the story and pointing out to the injustice, to the human rights abuse that this individual is being going through. Plus, so this is so this is one thing, very simple thing, you know, you spend ten minutes, write short simple letter and send it to John Baird to make sure that he's going to follow up with the case. Second thing is, this is a political case. Everybody knows that. So, um, Mr. Kazaz had not been charged. The situation in Egypt is very fragile. So, every other pressure coming from Canada to raise the issue with our own MPs, for example. So John Baird, is, he's the Foreign Affairs Minister, but also raising the issue with our own MPs. It's very important. So I think those are very concrete actions, easy, um, you know, everybody can do, and they can make an effect. Of course, they cannot bring Hal the Kazaz right away, but this is a long process, and an event like this event, this evening, is a good step. The pressure should be continued, and uh, every action is important. Um, but for sure, 
being silent is not an option, even though some people decided to. But I think whoever decided to attend this evening uh, has a responsibility to, to do and um, to uh, work upon it. Basically, this is, these are a few ideas I wanted to share with you. If you have other questions, uh, I would be able to, to answer as much as I can. But it is very important to remember that what happened in Egypt is a reflection of what we are going through here in Canada. So don't think that Egypt is a far country. Egypt, where the human rights are being abused, where the violations of people's rights are common daily, this is not, uh, you know, in another world. Also, I would like to remind you of, of, uh, of one point before I finish. Um, look at the difference between how Ukraine is being portrayed in the media and how the Egyptian situation is being treated here in Canada, in the media. So I think it's very important. Of course, maybe people can tell that the issues are not the same. However, there are some similarities and we can discuss this, but Canada is much more vocal, much more involved uh, in Ukraine if we compare with its reaction of, about Egypt. So I think, again, this is not something that happened overnight. You know, there are people, Ukrainian origins, in Canada who work, they work very hard to make what's going on there in Ukraine known into the Canadian public. Canadian public need to know the information, need to hear about these horror stories, need to, to be informed, and because we are privileged here to hear about Sarah's ordeal, I think we have, again, this responsibility, this moral responsibility to share it with our friends, our neighbors, and create this awareness and create this, uh, you know, something also I would like to, to say here, I'm not sure if it is really the right time to say it, but I'm going to say it, it doesn't matter. <laughs> we don't help someone because we belong to the same country, or because we belong to the same group, or, be, or because they are our friends, you know. I think we help, we, we have someone because we believe in justice. And it is a test for our true beliefs. So these cases, we don't help, I'm not helping Khalid because I know him. I'm helping, or at least I'm trying to help, because I believe that what happened to him, what happened to my family, can happen to anyone else. I still remember 2002, December, in Parliament Hill. I saw someone, I know his name, I'm not going to mention his name, Canadian guy, maybe 70 years old. He came to a vigil where, like, that we have organized at that time. I don't know him. He was there. And I was impressed. Minus 25, whatever, you know, 25, 25, the same. And he was sitting there. He was standing in the cold. <coughs> Why do you think he, he came to the vigil to support me? He doesn't know me. He was not a Muslim. He was not, you know. He was just Canadian citizen. He believed in the injustice. And this lady of yesterday, she didn't get it. I hope you will get it.